Now, hello, uh, welcome back. Um, so, continuing with the um, the in interpretation and the analysis of the uh, uh, the regression result of um, the Google's um, <clears throat> a security characteristic line. Um, so um, uh, we were, you know, basically uh, uh, talking about uh, the T statistics and what it means. And of course, you know, uh, these are the things that uh, uh, require a lot of, you know, uh, uh, thinking, um, logical, uh, thinking, logical reasoning on a very abstract level. So it's not easy to, uh, you know, verbalize it. But I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to uh, give it the best shot. But you know, also trying to, um, uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, rely on the intuition. I mean, trying to give you the uh, uh, intuition. Uh, and the intuition, uh, the best way to uh, explain abstract things, abstract concept is, you know, via uh, uh, analogy. And actually, these are uh, the things in the, uh, these are, you know, basically things that happen in the, uh, uh, the realm of data, right? So, uh, it's hard, you know. There's, there's no analogy. I mean, there's, there's no easy analogy. But if I may, actually, if I, if you think about T, uh, once again, I said, um, uh, the T is basically the, these, you know, uh, uh, estimates um, of the coefficients, uh, alpha and beta. Uh, it's the ratio of these, you know. Uh, uh, estimates uh, to their own standard error. Now think about it. Think of it this way. Uh, okay, so basically, um, uh, t is the uh, estimated value. T statistics is the t statistic is the uh, estimated value minus hypothesis hypothesis value. Uh, over standard error of the estimate. So, what is the hypothesis value? Hypothesis value is, you know, uh, uh, that alpha is zero, meaning, you know, uh, if alpha is zero, then there is no um, no alpha, meaning there is no abnormal return. There is no super, uh, you know, uh, uh, return or uh, and in you know efficient market hypothesis, I mean uh, one of one of one of one of you uh, asked me uh, uh, by email uh, this question about the efficient market hypothesis, and all uh, it's to you know although we cannot touch on that topic be because we are you know uh, this is all we can you know we're we are you know constrained we have such a uh, uh, huge constraint in time, right? So, um, but you know, uh, the efficient market hypothesis, the core of uh, the efficient market hypothesis is that uh, uh, because the um, mark, uh, the price market is so efficient that the price already reflects every possible information, public or, you know, uh, private. So meaning that all, all the prices are fairly, um, market prices are fairly priced. They are uh, correct, correctly. In other words, there's no mispricing. In other words, you know, on a security market line, uh, uh, there, uh, if, if any uh, stock, uh, the, the scatter plot of, the scatter plot is above the security market line, what what does that mean? That stock is uh, undervalued. If it is, if it falls below this uh, security market line, that means that stock is overvalued, right? So, uh, but this is mispricing. This means you know this indicates mispricing because you know uh, for 
an over uh, overpriced uh, overpriced stock. Obviously, you know, uh, uh, return its expected return would fall below its fair, you know, intrinsic uh, or fair return, rational return, right? And the rational return is uh, falls on the uh, uh, security market line. Exactly, falls on the security market line. And if any underpriced uh, stock would uh, give you abnormal, um, you know, abnormal return. I mean, abnormally good return. Um, so that's why uh, the expected return lies above the uh, security market line. But think about it. Uh, under efficient market hypothesis, and you know, uh, uh, especially you know, under strong form efficiency. Uh, all, uh, all the information um, is already priced in. All private, public, everything is already you know priced in. So the price, there is no mispricing, right? If there is no pricing, there is no way you can make money, right? You buy only you know. I mean, the only th uh, you buy, you pay the price, uh, the market price, which is you know exactly the. Uh, uh, rational price. Uh, I mean, in the short run, think about it. If anything is undervalued, right, uh, you buy cheaper than what it really should be, right? And then when when the market participants catch up, right, they all realize that this this stock is undervalued. Then all they all try to jump in, and then they will um, push up the price because you know. Uh, there, there will be an upward pressure, and when the price come, uh, goes up, then there's no more, you know, um, incentive to. Uh, there's no more uh, price advantage. I mean, you know, there's there won't be uh, uh, undervalued anymore, right? So there's no room for extra return. So um, just like that, if it is, you know, uh, um, if uh, if the stock is uh, priced exactly, then um, there will be. Uh, this is, you know, um, not security market line, but you know, security characters characteristic line. But it's the, you know, same idea, same concept. Um, uh, the regression line will go through. There is no uh, exactly pass through the uh, origin, right? Zero. So there will be no alpha. Right, alpha will be zero. So that is the uh, 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 null hypothesis, uh, hypothesis value. In other words, you know, uh, because under uh, uh, equilibrium, at equilibrium, right, uh, there should be no. Uh, mispricing and therefore uh, uh, the alpha should be zero right so um, but you know the estimated value was not zero so uh, we take the difference and divide it by standard error because standard error literally it means standard error that's us uh, uh, usually the error that you will encounter standard error right so if it is, um, think about it. Uh, if it is within this, you know, uh, uh, if the difference, if the difference is not much greater than the uh, standard error, then that is just a frivolous, right? Uh, that estimate is only different from the uh, uh, hypothesized value of zero. Only frivolously, frivolous. It's a frivolous difference. You understand? It's a frivolous difference. It's not a significant difference, but a frivolous difference. Okay. So um, basically, you know. Um, uh, so if you think about it, uh, alpha is the ratio uh, T stat for alpha is the ratio of alpha to standard error, right? 
which which is like you know uh, information ratio, right? Alpha. So in other words, does it bring any uh, uh, does alpha bring any significant uh, difference to uh, the usual you know estimate, which is you know uh, uh, not substantially or significantly different from zero, right? For beta, uh, the hypothesized value can be either zero or one. Uh, you know, also it's the uh, you know um, information ratio in a way, right? Uh, so back to uh, uh, as I said, you know, uh, that's why the p-value is uh, important because uh, that's probability. Think about it. If you remember, you know. Um, normal distribution characteristics, right? Uh, if you are lying outside two standard deviation from the mean, if, you're, if any observation is, is lying outside two standard deviations, right? Uh, that's an extreme rare probability, right? Lying out two standard deviations, you know, either up uh, right tail or left tail, right? You have to fall into that 2% extreme uh, probability. Uh, I mean, beyond you know, two standard deviation, that's two percent, right? Now, if if that, so if that you know, um, z value, z score is more than two. Think about it. Three standard deviation above the mean, four standard deviation above the mean. What would be the probability? This means it's five point five eight standard deviation above the mean. And what would be the uh, probability? It's some, you know, 0 0.0000 something, right? Very, very low probability. So in other words, uh, the probability of encounter encountering this kind of, uh, this type of, you know, estimate is, you know, uh, uh, extremely, extremely low. So this is not a frivolous observation. This means, you know, this um, estimate is not frivolous estimate, right? This is not a result of any uh, frivolous, frivolous, you know, result, right? Because um, if it is, you know, um, if this estimate, uh, I mean, t t statistics is, you know, less than two uh, or less than one, I mean, that means what? This is something that can easily happen, right? Uh, although the true, although the uh, uh, true mean of beta is, in other, when I say true mean of the beta, think about it, I, as I said, you know, if you're having a lot of sample uh, groups, right? Um, over a 40 year, uh, history of Apple. Uh, what did I say? Uh, if you're collecting monthly uh, returns, monthly returns data, there will be 100, 480 uh, data points. And how many, you know, um, uh, five-year subsets can there be? In this 40 years, there will be at least, you know, uh, eight unoverlapping five-year samples. Make sense? I mean, if we allow for overlapping, right, uh, five-year time frame, there can be numerous, numerous, you know, uh, 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 samples, right? And if you take, uh, using those, you know, uh, uh, samples, if you regress and get uh, uh, betas, these beta, betas will all uh, be different. These betas will be all different, but you know, um, uh, our question is: Is our beta estimate uh, really uh, significantly different from zero or one? I mean, zero. I I, I will you know, it can be zero. You know, I mean, uh, the null uh, null hypothesis, the hypothesized. Uh, value of beta can be zero, or uh, that's when, you know, um, 
you are just you know uh, uh, using just you know uh, without thinking about without um, uh, without regressing it on the market, but just you know a time series of you know app, uh, Apple alone. But you know uh, if uh, another null hypothesis is for beta is one. Why? One is what market market portfolios beta is always one, isn't that right? Uh, so since we are uh, basically beta is you know uh, uh, of each individual stock or uh, uh, individual portfolio is you know uh, a comparison to uh, you know uh, basically a comparison to the market's beta, right? Um, so anyway, either we, uh, either whether our hypothesized, you know, uh, beta is zero or one, uh, uh, the point is, uh, is, you know, um, when you have like, you know, uh, out of this, you know, uh, uh, 40 year, population, data population of, you know, uh, uh, 40 or data, uh, data points of, you know, uh, Apple data. Uh, if we uh, run regression of five-year subsets, right, five-year samples, uh, let's say we make, you know, uh, allowing for overlapping, uh, we make, you know, uh, uh, 20 samples of five-year data, right, five-year data sets, and we run regression. Uh, and we will get, of course, each, you know, different sample data sets will give slightly different uh, beta values. But then is the, the, um, if we take the average of betas of these 20 sample groups, right? It will be closer to the true beta, right? True beta of, you know, uh, of, uh, you know from 40 years uh, or true mean of betas uh, of, you know, uh, from the population. Um, so, um, that's called, you know, uh, that's that's the uh, properties of sampling distribution. What's what does that mean? Sampling distribution means, you know, uh, you you may not be able to observe the true mean from the uh, uh, sample, right? In other words, uh, suppose you know you want to find, you know, um, uh, average. Uh, height or average weight of everyone in the United States. That's like 300 million people. Can you measure, can you, you know, uh, uh, weight everyone in the United States? Well, it's, it's not impossible, but it's uh, impractical, right? Uh, you, you have to go out and, you know, so um, what do you do? You just, you know, take samples, you know, from the Northeast, you know, 100 people, Southwest, you know, 100 people, you know, randomly. You pick, you know, Rocky Mountain states, you know, 100 people randomly, you know, South from Southern states, you know, 100 people. So let's say we have, you know, 1,000 groups of, you know, 100 people. So that's 1,000 sample, right? 1,000 samples. And if you take the average of these, you know, samples, you know, each sample will have different means, right? Uh, but the point is, if we take the average of all these, you know, uh, 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 did I say thousand samples, right? Uh, 100 people, you know, um, thousand, that, that will be, you know, uh, 100,000 people. But, you know, if we take the I mean, 100,000 people is still far short of, you know, uh, uh, 
representing you know, uh, 300 million, but if they are randomly selected sample, right? If they are ram randomly selected, right? Uh, and random, uh, evenly from all geographic locations, right? Uh, by taking the uh, mean of these means, in other words, by taking the average of these, you know, uh, uh, means of these, you know, 100, uh, 1,000 samples, you know, uh, we get the mean that is cl very close to the uh, mean of the population. So even without uh, really uh, canvassing <laughs> everyone, uh, uh, 300 million people in the U.S., right? even without having to do that, uh, by using the sampling distribution, uh, we can uh, get uh, the result that is close to the true mean, okay? So that, that's the idea. So in other words, uh, so apply that all, again to uh, 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 Apple. Apple has 40 years, you know, um, of, you know, um, data, right? 40 years worth of data, which is, you know, population and you know in uh, if we you know monthly you know uh, data still 480 and you don't have to uh, run regression over 40 years because obviously if you run regression over 40 years this uh, it serves you know no purpose because it will come out as you know <laughs> something very very close to one uh, because you know, uh, over 40 years, you know, everything gets neutralized, right? Uh, everything gets, you know. Um, uh, so um, that's why we don't use any more than five-year time frame. So with you know, like 25-year uh, samples, right? Uh, if you repeatedly run regression and get, uh, we may get different. Uh, beta values, but you know, uh, uh, these beta, uh, the null hypothesis is that the beta is not significantly different from one. Because everything, uh, because of, you know, this is because of the mean reversion, because I said, you know, over like 40 year, uh, 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 the, the return over 40 years uh, is pretty much, you know, a very neutral number, right? Monthly return or, you know, average monthly return over 40 years, you know, uh, will be a very neutral number because, you know, uh, uh, there's mean reversion, right? Um, uh, there's, you know, if you look at the... Uh, uh, stock market and look uh, look at the charts. You know, don't not you know daily. I mean, uh, even if if you look at the daily charts, you know, uh, over the long time horizon, you see the same thing. But suppose you are looking at you know monthly or you know quarterly or annual, uh, not necessarily annual, but you know quarterly or monthly uh, uh, charts and return, right? Return that. At the price, if you look at the uh, returns chart over like five year time horizon or 10 year time horizon, you will see, you know, there, there's ups and downs, ups and downs. But eventually, when there is an you know, up, then there is down. And there is down, when there is down, there is up. And eventually, if you take uh, the average, you know, uh, I mean, um, the trend will uh, uh, show mean reversion, reversion to the mean, right? So <clears throat> that's why the hypothesis, null hypothesis is that uh, uh, beta, uh, uh, null hypothesis of uh, beta is one. And do we get repeatedly, you know, uh, anything sig significantly different from one, right? That is the question. In other words, um, uh, if the probability is very low, uh, like this, that means this estimate is significantly, diff statistically significant. That means statistically, meaning, you know, uh, it is outside two standard deviation. This is something that can be observed outside only, you know, two standard deviation. It's actually, you know, outside five standard deviation. 
So it's an outlier of outliers, right? It's an outlier of outliers. So um, the null hypothesis that you know uh, the mean is significantly different from one. Okay. Or you know, uh, uh, depending on what the null hypothesis is. Uh, otherwise, you know, if this t is uh, less than two, that means uh, although it may it may look you know uh, superficially 1.2, but it may be you know in, uh, actually no different than uh, uh, one. I mean, it's just the uh, the the true beta is uh, no different than one. Uh, what we observed here is just the just by chance, right? Uh, it's a fluke, it's just by chance, and uh, uh, so that's why you know uh, uh, if t value is less than two, this is not a robust estimate. Is a frivolous estimate, frivolous, right? Frivol frivolous result. That's why. It, it, so again, you know, it took so much time, uh, but this is, you know, um, uh, a very abstract con abstract concept, and only, you know, very logical mind, logical reasoning mind, can uh, uh, have a solid grip on it. Now, so, uh, and then uh, we talked about the adjusted, you know, uh, R square and the um, uh, dominant contribution of the firm specific factors, which is, you know, the error uh, residuals to variation in return is typical of stocks. Right. In other words, yeah, every stock has, you know, uh, uh, its firm specific uh, factors. Right. Remember, uh, two sources of risk, you know, systematic and non-systematic. Non-systematic means, you know, uh, firm specific factors. Right. Like, you know, business risk and financial risk. And they get you. You can uh, minimize or completely, you know, uh, uh, void. Or nullify the you know uh, non system non systemic risk by diversification of the portfolio, right? And um, see Google, right? Uh, see these uh, wide you know uh, uh, wide variance is the uh, uh, Google's uh, firm specific uh, is called residual or error, you know, forecast error. But, you know, uh, it, uh, the forecast, that doesn't mean, you know, uh, error sounds like a bad thing. No, this is the uh, uh, actual actual return. Actual return was, you know, uh, this, this much, you know, better than what uh, uh, the index model. Uh, predicted, right? Obviously, nobody would uh, dislike it. No, it is, you know, it's a volatility, but this is a, a you know, a pleasant surprise, right? It's a, a volatility that is, you know, uh, that everyone wants. This type of volatility, uh, this type of, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, people don't want. I mean, uh, Everything below this regression line is called, you know, downside risk. Everything above it is the upside risk. And, you know, there's no reason market wouldn't welcome upside risk. Right? Makes sense. All right. So here, um, so alpha, uh, if alpha is positive, right? Realized return of Google is above the uh, security market line. However, the estimate, estimated alpha, uh, estimated standard error of alpha is, you know, 1.09, which is, you know, uh, 
greater than uh, alpha itself. In other words, you know, uh, the information ratio of alpha is less than one. Uh, and that's why uh, the T value is low, right? A T value is at best, you know, if you divide that number, it's going to, it's going to come out like this. And the uh, probability of that number happening is only like 42.6%, uh, which is you know, not, uh, uh, which is, you know, um, slightly between one standard and two standard deviation, right? Because, you know, uh, one standard deviation is you know the probability of one standard deviation is 34 percent one way right right 68 percent both ways but you know uh, so um that means the probability of alpha being this number even if true alpha is zero uh is only 40 uh, is 46.2 percent so uh, that means uh, alpha is uh, actually, you know, zero and frivol frivolous, this estimate is only a frivolous result, frivolous, you know, uh, result, uh, estimation result, right? And upper and lower bounds of 95% confidence interval. 95% uh, confidence interval is like, you know, uh, uh, like you know, uh, two standard deviations, you know, um, uh, for, you know, um, until standard deviation is 96, actually. Um, so, um, that interval, 95% confidence interval is negative uh, 1.74 uh, between, you know, negative uh, uh, 1.74 and uh, 3.49, right? That's where the true alpha is and with the probability of 95%. So we cannot conclude with confidence that the true alpha is significantly different from zero, non-zero, right? Uh, and for beta, right, uh, I already talked about this, you know, one of, uh, one, uh, the null hypothesis is the uh, base uh, hypothesis in, you know, uh, um, and we can have, you know, uh, two alternative, you know, uh, two, um, it's not two null hypotheses. One, you know, beta is uh, uh, zero. The other one, uh, uh, beta is uh, uh, not one. Now, so I cannot reteach, you know, I cannot teach, you know, entire statistics, you know, uh, <clears throat> in this class because, you know, it's, uh, of course, you know, uh, not the, uh, but you know, I've been talking about what hypothesis testing is, you know, basically, you know, um, um, you know, hypothesis testing, you know, uh, the uh, the base hypothesis is called, you know, null hypothesis or H not, H zero, zero, not, right? <laughs> and a U G H T not, right? Uh, meaning, you no know, zero, right? And the, uh, the uh, opposing uh, hypothesis or counterpart hypothesis called uh, alternative hypothesis, it's either uh, uh, represented by H sub A, H subscript A, or H1, right? Alternative hypothesis. So basically, you know, um, uh, whether we, you know, uh, uh, have uh, uh, beta equals zero as null or Beta not uh, beta not equal to uh, one as null hypothesis. The point is, can we uh, uh, from the estimate that was generated by our regression model, can we reject the null hypothesis? Can we reject 
the null hypothesis. If we reject the null hypothesis, then we accept the, you know, uh, uh, the alternative hypothesis. I mean, because null is that the beta is, uh, true beta is zero. Uh, if we reject that, then uh, the, we are accepting that uh, beta is uh, significantly uh, different from zero, right? And we, I already you know, um, talked about this. It's just, you know, uh, uh, showing you um, uh, further, you know, explanation. Uh, um, So if we use you know, uh, uh, this null hypothesis, right? Beta is, um, a true beta is zero, then the low, um, uh, extremely high uh, T value and low probability uh, uh, allows us to reject the null hypothesis, hypothesis and we can accept that this is you know, significantly, uh, uh, statistically sig significant and robust estimate, right? It's not frivolous. And if you use, you know, uh, beta is not equal to one as null hypothesis, and uh, uh, we cannot conclude with 95%, you know, uh, confidence uh, that beta is not equal to uh, one. Uh, so beta may be one, that means beta may be one. Uh, this, uh, because true beta is, you know, within, uh, with 95% confidence, within uh, 0.69, uh, within this range, 0.69 and 1.72. So the true, uh, there is a 95% probability that the uh, true beta is, uh, could be one. But anyway, um, uh, one thing is for sure, um, if true beta is, um, true beta is one, then uh, uh, we can still reject that the beta is zero, right? I mean, 1.2 is closer to uh, one than uh, zero, right? So uh, because we get, you know, uh, uh, we don't, I mean, we understand that, you know, 1.2, is a robust estimate, uh, but you know uh, there is no 100%. Uh, we don't have 100%. You know uh, we can be, we cannot be 100%. Uh, there is no 100% uh, confidence that it is uh, 1.2. Okay, so we need more. I mean, you know, uh, what I'm saying is, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, we can generally accept 1.2 as the, uh, uh, you know, uh, beta estimate, right? Uh, because T value is so high, probability is so low, right? Uh, but if you're like a hair splitting, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, with the uh, precision of, you know, uh, uh, you know, rocket science, I mean, you know, uh, Think about it. If uh, from a satellite, let's say, uh, you know, you have a uh, uh, weapon, satellite weapon that can, you know, uh, uh, fire a laser beam, you know, concentrate laser beam and blow out you know, <laughs> the whole city. <laughs> a slight, you know, uh, miscalibration, a slight miscalibration would result in a uh, a total disaster, right? So if you are, and then you need such a uh, uh, hair splitting precision and accuracy. And if you need that, then uh, we need more info, right? To compute betas. Uh, and then uh, we can also compute betas of other firms in the same industry, which ought to be similar to Google's and we can sharpen the estimate of Google's beta, okay? Um, so, um, it took a lot of time again, uh, but you know, that's, that's what it is. I mean, what can you do? Um, uh, 
Uh, it's a very, you know, uh, uh, complex and abstract concept. And only because you're on, you know, in uh, 300, at least, you know, uh, you are ready to, uh, uh, you know, finance 300 and uh, you're ready to uh, at least, you know, uh, uh, touch on the uh, this concept. I mean, even if you may not uh, get a strong grip, strong hold on this concept, but, you know, uh, you can think more, handle more abstract thinking than when you were uh, taking FMB 100. Probably that may happen like two semesters ago, four semesters ago for some of you. Certainly, you know, uh, you are more honed, right? Then uh, you're more wedded and uh, honed than when you were, right? Uh, to handle this type of, you know, thinking, this level of, you know, complexity and abstractness uh, than when you were taking Finance 100. All righty, so uh, that's it for now, and I will uh, see you guys. Uh, in the next session.